a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all
this valley seems so long that I'll never leave this place. But I can't thank you for the answer. Lord, I'll thank you for the grace. Great depths of love we cannot know while on the mountaintops. You see, it's in the darkest of our days we learn to trust in God. Through all my many heartaches here as I run my earthly race, when I can thank you for the answer, Lord, I'll thank you for the to go another mile. Thank you for the strength I feel just to face this bitter trial. And though this valley seems so long that I'll never leave this place. valley seems so long that I'll never leave this place when I can't thank you for the answer Lord I'll thank you for the grace when I can't thank you for the answer I'll thank you for the grace. Amen.
Jeremiah chapter number 15 and as you're turning your Bible you and I both know this book to be a book that is not always a positive book we know this book to be a book that sometimes is not popular it's not familiar to a lot of people matter of fact if I was going to say something today I would say that this book is Jeremiah known as the weeping prophet even the adjective the description that we give to this prophet is not a a vibrant description it's a it's a weeping it's a time weeping it's a time of sorrow if you want to say it that way and for many years we look at his life and we say that this is a man that is a weak man he's a broken man but I would dare say based upon the word of God that he might be a weak man and he might be a broken man and he might be a feeble man because of the things around him but I want to tell you this that personally he's a man that's full of joy no matter what his circumstances is and no matter what he deals with no matter what it is that he goes through he still has joy and God uses him in the midst of everything that is around him and you say how is that possible to be so broken and so burdened and so overwhelmed and so much of a realistic, if I could say it that way. In other words, let's be honest, we can be saved, but we're not blind. We understand that times are changing and and living for Jesus is not popular. We understand the things that are before us and we understand the importance of this past week. We understand it, so we must be realistic, but how do we keep joy? How do we keep on going for the glory of God? But I would present to you and I would propose that maybe you understand this, that God himself, Jesus, was the same way. And the reason why Jeremiah could be so broken and overwhelmed and still have joy is because Jesus was that way. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 1, the Bible says this. It says in Hebrews 1, 9, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. I mean, we're talking about Jesus. Uh, he, he, he loves righteousness and hates iniquity. But then the Bible says this, therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So what that tells us is that God and Jesus themselves was burdened and, and, and troubled by sin. There was anger by sin. There was uh, grief by sin but at the same time they had joy and listen if you have the heart of God no matter what you feel today you can be just like Jeremiah you can be broken because of this nation you can be burdened because of the sin and what we're accepting you can be overwhelmed and weeping because of sinners but just because you're broken for the nation and because of the sin and the sinners that does not mean that we walk around defeated no we can still and we should still have joy this morning I want to ask you After everything that's transpired, how's your countenance? How's your joy? Forgive me for being a little more transparent this morning, but I I think I will with the help of the Holy Ghost. 
So many people question why in the world for so many weeks and months that I did not propose a certain man or a certain party and even criticize the way that I would approach it. And it's because we never know what God chooses, but we know this, God always chooses what's best. My job is to be able to help you understand with the help of the Holy Ghost that no matter who gets elected and what this country does, what they condone, what they agree with or what they don't agree with, that God is still faithful and will always be faithful. And I want to ask you this morning, how's your countenance? How's your fire? How is your life as a Christian today? Are you still vibrant? Are you still excited? Are you still serving the Lord? Are you ready to be able to go out and do something for Jesus because God is still on the throne? The Bible says in verse number 1 of chapter 15, notice as we unfold this story, he's talking about a nation. He says, Then said the Lord, the Lord speaking unto me, Jeremiah. Notice these words. Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet... My mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. This is what God says. I'm going to judge this nation. Can you imagine being Jeremiah here? He's hearing the word. God's going to judge the nation. And here it is that he's going to be here. He's going to deal with it. He's going to face it. I would dare say that might be discouraging. But see, there's more to it because he says, even though, notice these words, though Moses and Samuel... In other words, when he says Moses and Samuel, those two, you know about those two. They had access to God. They knew how to pray. I mean, they was close to God. He said literally, though they be here, though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind. In other words, I don't care who's standing here. I'm telling you, I'm still going to judge this nation. That's what he tells Jeremiah. So here he is. He's talking about the judgment. And I would dare say that we understand without any question that there will be judgments, that there will be issues. You cannot kill babies. You cannot stand and agree with a homosexuality. You cannot go into this debt and be able to stand against Israel. You cannot do these things and think that God's okay with it. Why? God is never okay with sin. He's never okay with it. So then we ask ourselves, what do I do? Do I rise up? Do I riot? No, because see, the truth be told, we don't riot. I mean, most of the time, Christians, we're not going to riot. We're not going to bust windows. We're not going to do anything physical, but yet we'll use the tongue to be able to defeat people. And we justify ourselves thinking they're doing damage by tearing buildings down, but yet we're still righteous because all we do is speak it, but we don't do it. Let me say this. You have the opportunity to speak life or death with your tongue. Be careful because the way you respond to this will speak life or death into this situation. And here Jeremiah is. He says, Lord, I don't like this. This is not good. I can't agree with this. Can you imagine the way that he feels? Then all of a sudden, he goes from talking about the nation to the individual. The Bible says in verse number 11, if you'll pick up with me, then said, then the, the Lord said, Verily, it shall be well with the, thy remnant. Verily, I will cause the enemy to retreat thee well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. So now all of a sudden he goes from the nation and now he's talking to the individual. Can I say this to you this morning? I'm glad that even though something might change and I might not agree with the way that things happen, not just in this nation, but also in this city and maybe even around me, or there's some things I don't agree with. I'm glad that even though things go one way, that God can still speak to me. I'm glad that even though things are going sideways, that God can still speak to me. And even though sometimes I don't understand my environment and we don't understand what's going on around us, that God still speaks to us as individuals. Why? You are a child of God. God God's not going to forsake you. God's not going to turn his back on you. God is still going to help you and protect you and keep you. And he's going to lead you through the same way God has always done that. So I want to ask you today. On this backside, this Sunday after what we call the election. How was the pep in your step when you walked in? Notice the words. He says, verily. Verily, in that verse, number 11, in other words, truly, 
In other words, listen to what I'm telling you. Don't miss what I'm about to tell you. In other words, you can mark it down. Jeremiah, though your nation is going to be judged, I want you to know something. Listen to me is what he's saying. What are you saying, Lord? He says here in that same verse, he says, thy remnant. In other words, he says, I know that the nation might be judged and they're going in the wrong direction. God says, but I know that there's still a remnant who loves me. And I'll tell you something. You and I, if you're saved this morning, we're in that remnant. And everything is all right. Everything will be all right. God will take care of us. He's not going to turn his back. And he's telling us, look at me. Listen to me. What I'm telling you is this. I will send judgment if it's needed. It's going to be sent. But in the midst of it all, I'm going to take care of you. By the way, isn't that what we're concerned about? What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my children? Come on now, y'all don't get quiet. I mean, we talk about it on, on Facebook, on news, on social media, all over. Don't get quiet on me. You know what I mean by it. we're so open. Let's just get the cat out of the bag and all these things. It matters. We want to know that in four years, in 10 years, and 20 years, everything's going to be all right. God says, look at me. I know there's a remnant. It's going to be all right. And then notice this. He says there's what? Affliction. In other words, but. I'm going to take care of you, but. It's not going to come without affliction. There's going to be some hard times. Hello, look up here. There's going to be some difficulties. Same verse, verse number 11. There's going to be some problems. There's going to be some things you and I don't like. He's saying there's going to be some affliction. It's going to affect you. It's going to touch you. There's going to be some things that you're going to feel out of this. But I want you to know my eyes are still on you. Do you know what our children need to know today? And the next generation need to know today? Do you know what we need to be reminded of? If even though God sees it, even though God will judge it, that his eyes are still on us and he loves us this morning. God loves us this morning. Notice what the story is. He tells us in verse number 12. Shall iron break the northern iron and the steel? Thy substance and thy treasures will I give to the spoil without price, and that for all thy sins, even in all thy borders. And I will make thee to pass with thine enemies into the land which thou knowest not, for the fire is kindled in mine anger. Let me read that again. God says this, for a fire is kindled in mine anger, which shall burn upon you. Reality sets in. Jeremiah realizes, okay, here I am in the midst of this nation. And literally, God is about to deal with us. The nation itself is about to collapse. Judah is almost in Babylonian captivity. Jerusalem is about to be destroyed. I mean, the pressure is setting on top of Jeremiah. What do you do? Notice where he picks up in verse number 15. Then, notice, Jeremiah begins to speak. And look what he says, O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me and revenge me of my persecution. Take me not away from thy long suffering. Uh, long suffering. Know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. He comes to a place where Jeremiah says, Lord, I just want you to know that I'm still looking to you. Even though this nation is going one way, even though my environment is going one way, even though things are going another way, I want you to know that I'm still trusting in you. And I want to tell you something today, that God knows where this nation is. God knows what we're facing. God knows what we're doing. And I'm not trying to be a cliche preacher. You know me. I'm not all about that. I wouldn't preach this if God did not put it on my heart. But I'm telling you the same thing that I've said for the last month after 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 month and literally all the time that I'm not sitting back being passive saying I'm okay with all the things that should not be right lined up to the Word of God. But I am telling you this, no matter what happens and what God permits, God is still on the throne and God is still in control. There's no reason for us to be depleted. There's no reason for us to lose our testimony. There's no reason for us to quit, to walk away, to step outside of character. And God forbid that we lose our testimony because we don't like the way things happen. God says there's still a plan. There's still a plan for Haynes Baptist Church on 42 to 10 Sabrina Lake Road. There's still a plan here. God's got a plan for us. And he comes to this place and he opens it up. And this is literally what I will speak of this morning about a nation that drifts. Remembering me in a nation that drifts. As he looks at the revival, I mean at the remnant. And I'll say this. and give you how to be able to stay close. 
I don't know whether that we're at the place of either having revival or if we're at the place of ruin. I don't know that. I can't stand before you today and tell you what's getting ready to happen in this country. I have no idea whatsoever what's going to happen, whether it's going to be a ruin for us or whether it's going to be a revival for us. But this is one thing that I can tell you is that God sees us. And when everything else makes like we're the underdog, and I'm saying we, not as a political party and not as your presidential candidate, I'm talking about those of us that voted based upon the Word of God and the Bible. That's what I'm talking about today. That I want you to know God still sees it. And if you're anything like me, it matters to you because you've got a child or you've got children. You've got people behind you. It matters because you know whatever happens the next four years, it will affect you somehow, some way. Can I get an amen? Don't get quiet on me. But no matter what happens, God is still in control. So what is it that he says? Notice we'll pick up, if you will, in verse number 15. The Bible says this. As Jeremiah speaks, he says, Oh, Lord, thou knowest. What does God know? Everything. Lord knows everything. You say, why does that matter? Because that's what you and I need to settle right now in our hearts. He knew last week where we'd be this week. He knew who was going to get in office. He knew all the things that were going to happen. He knows. We, but here we are. We're so consumed with trying to know what's been done, whether votes were done right, whether they weren't done right, whether or not this is good, whether this is not right, whether this state won, whether this state won. We're so worried about when the truth be told, all that matters is that we're like Jeremiah and we come to a place of contentment saying, God, you know, it don't matter what I know. I'm content in you, and because I'm content in you, you know everything. Everything's going to be all right. But meanwhile, the devil's having a heyday, destroying God's people. We've already won. But the devil is dividing us and coming between us because we're so controlling. We want to control everything. We want to have it our way. You know what biblical obedience is? doing the right thing we do a good job of that at the right time sometimes with the right attitude that's what we miss bless God this is what I'm going to stand for the Bible says stand so I'm going to stand and I'm going to do exactly what God says no you ain't because you're like a horse that ain't never been broken you got all these tools you got all this ability and you're strong but you're weak and you're not usable because you're not broken Preach on, preacher, preach on. I see churches and Christians and families divided because of people that want to stand up and be so bold because of what they know and what they believe but never submitted to the Lord. And God says sometimes, sometimes I got to get you to a place to where it ain't matter about what you know, it's that you're reminded about what I know. So what is he saying? How do we stay close to the Lord when everything's going crazy? Notice the first thing I said is this. Stay close to God through your prayers. You see what's happening in verse number 15? He's praying. He's praying. He sits down and he opens up his mouth and he begins to talk. He says, oh Lord, thou knowest. Remember me and visit me and revenge me and my persecutors. He said, take, not, take me not away from thy long suffering. Know that uh, for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. He's praying. He's opening up. He's letting God speak and he's speaking to God. He's not just sitting there venting to the Lord and exhausting himself. No, he's opening up with the Lord and he's talking to him. And I wonder this morning or this almost afternoon, I wonder how many of us this week Instead of trying to sit up and try to control about things that we could not control, how many of us actually spent time on our knees instead of knowing more things about the politics? How many of us, listen, there's people who can stand up right now and they can talk about how much percentage that one state's over the votes that came in. They can talk about all the, all the different states that should have won and shouldn't have won. They can talk about uh, where it was blue and where it was red and all the other changes. But you tell me how many times that you sat on your knees compared to how many times you sat up and got your statistics off the TV. And you want to know why we feel like we're far away from God? It's because we're consumed with things that we should not be consumed about. That's God's business. He says, how do you win? Get on your knees. You say, you're telling me I shouldn't care? 
for the record and for all the live stream. Let me say, I do care. I spent 15 to 16 weeks in this church telling you what the Bible says. I care. But what I also knew is this, is there ain't a political party that's going to control us. There's not a man that we should look to. Man will fall. They'll fall before you. I don't care how good he is. But God is still on the throne. Jesus is still the answer. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is still my Savior. And nothing, nothing, nothing will ever change that. My hope is not in this world. It's in Jesus this morning. And what he's saying is if you want to stay close to God, stay on your knees. Stay on your knees. Notice how he prays. He opens up and he says, oh Lord, he says, remember me. In other words, Lord, show me mercy. Lord, I'm trusting you when you're, when you're dealing with all this and all this judgment and all the things that's happened. Lord, show me mercy. Listen, this is relevant for him because your children are wanting to know how to respond and they better know that you and I get down on our knees and we're able to be able to pray and say, God, I know you're going to deal with this and I'm not going to stand for it. But in the midst of it all, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will continue to be able to lift you up. Lord, will you remember us and have mercy on us? Let that be your prayer. Let that be your prayer. And then he says, Lord, visit me. He said, Lord, I know I'm sitting in a bunch of wickedness. But Lord, I sure do want your presence. Lord, I sure do want to be able to feel you. I still want to be able to see you. I, I want to see you be able to move mountains and do things. I want to see you answer prayer. Lord, I, I, I just want to stay in your presence. Meanwhile, God, that's why I'm submitting myself on my knees because it shows I have complete dependency upon you whenever I pray. And by that, God, that means I want to be in your presence. Are you listening to me this morning? A lot of times we say, God, I want your presence, but we don't live in a place where we stay in this presence. Somebody help me now. We don't stay surrendered. We don't stay submitted. So he said, Lord, I want you to visit me. And then he says this, revenge me. In other words, Lord, I'm just going to leave my troubles to you. Lord, I don't, I don't agree with this. Not this. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with this. I agree with what the Bible says. Lord, I, I, I didn't vote for that. I didn't vote for that. Maybe you did. I, I, listen, I, again, I don't, you might be happy today. You might not be happy today. I, honestly, I, I applaud you either way. But what I'm telling you this, whether you like it or you don't like it, there's one thing that do, does not change, and that's God is still in control. And my job is not to be able to congregate us and have a pep rally in this church about some kind of political party. And then all of a sudden, all of you walk in here today kicking around stones like you're defeated, like it was in the book of, I think, Luke chapter number 24, whenever Jesus, they thought the disciples thought he had done died. Man, they're so disheartened. They're so upset because they're like, well, we believed in him. But listen, that's the way a lot of people feel today. Jesus ain't dead, friend. Jesus is still alive and well today. Everything's still all right. If you want to stay close to God, listen, what we need to do today is maybe this is what God ta- it takes for us to be able to be, be more of a praying church. Amen. Maybe, maybe this is what God permits for us to be a praying church because God says, in the midst of it all, if you want to stay close to me, we ought to stay close through prayer. Second thing is, go a little bit further down. The Bible says this, notice in verse number 16, thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Not only stay close through prayer, but also you stay close through his word. Can I ask you a question? Do you read your Bible? And every day when you got up and you looked at your Facebook and you looked at your Twitter and you looked at your news to see if we had a presidential candidate, did, did you get in your Bible before you got on your Facebook? Did you get on your knees? Did you get, did, did you get into the Word that speaks life unto you before you turned on a bunch of crookedness and chaos? And friend, look up here. Look up here. I can tell you right now, that I ain't voting for anybody that's going sideways against the Word of God. So th- this ain't no, you know, I'm telling you so or whatever. I-, I make no apology of voting for somebody that lines up with the Bible of what they do or what they stand for. I don't. But what I know is this. If there's been a lot of times in my life, let's forget about politics, that I've been let down. And you know what I've learned? God is still on the throne. God is still on th- Things don't always go my way. Things don't all, you, you have to be weaned. That's what the Bible says in Psalms 131. You have to be weaned as a child. You ever seen a baby that gets weaned? 
when they're first with their mom and all of a sudden they begin to be fed and then all of a sudden they transition uh, from the mom feeding them to a bottle they begin to cry they begin to complain why because we got to go through those things but you have to be submitted like that because as the Lord grows us or, or teaches us or raises us we have to be weaned we have to grow through it but we got to submit to them and the way that we understand what God's want, wants is we get in the word of God I bet right now I could stand our kids up and forgive me again I, I'm just I could stand our kids up and they could probably tell us statistically what happened this week but I wonder how many of them could get up and they could say well let me say what I said I seen about my mom or dad this week that they done for the Lord let me take let me take the Bible verse that I heard them quote how, how many of your children can get up and talk about what you prayed about this week Preach on, preacher, preach on. Tell me. And I'm saying it because we got to open our eyes. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. These are real things in spiritual warfare. And it's those children. It's that generation. They're going to be the ones that's going to lose if we don't realize that for the way for us to stay close to God, it's not about we get what we like. It's not about what we want. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. It's about staying close to God through, through prayer and staying close to God through His Word. Notice what he says in verse number 16. He says, not, notice, he said, the words were found and I did eat them. Get in the Word and let the Word get in you. Get in the Word and let the Word get in you. He said, I ate them. You want to know why? He said, I'm satisfied. When I eat, I'm satisfied. And by the way, do you only eat on Sundays and Wednesdays? Matter of fact, I, I, I eat Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And not only do I eat seven days a week, I eat three times a day. How much are you feeding your spiritual life? What I'm trying to tell you is, listen, I'm just a preacher. We can't always be in church. I want you to succeed. I want you to be able to live and be able to make it, not be so down and out. I don't want your countenance to be so broken and be so disheartened. And you begin to respond out of the flesh and doing all these different things. I want you to be able to take the Word of God and apply it to your life. And do as the Bible says, Thy word of a hit of my heart that I might not sin against thee. I mean meditate on the Word. Study the Word. Live the Word. Live the Word. Live the Word. We can't live this life being passive. And, I, and, I, and for the life of me, I don't, I've never in my life, I mean, I'm only 40 years old. I have never in my life, I mean, I'm to a place where I'm just, I, th these are my words. I'm, I'm tired of one, hearing about it, and I'm tired of even talking about it. I'm tired of it. I, I, I mean, I hate to tell you this, but I mean, I don't, I, I don't have the time. I, 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 can, I can promise you this. As far as I know, Donald Trump or Joe Biden, neither one of them called the McBride family on, on, on Friday morning when, when their son died. But God was there. I, I mean, you understand? I mean, I, I'm with you. But we're going to make it. Why? Because Jeremiah, he's in the midst of this. And literally God says, I'm going to judge this nation. Jeremiah says, well, Lord, will you just remember me? Will you visit me? Will you revenge me? But then he gets talking about his word. He said, Lord, I, I want your word. So he says, I, I want to be able to eat it. It's like food. It ministers. It satisfies me. But here's why. Because when you do that, notice in verse number 16 what it says. It says, I did eat them. Notice this. And thy word was unto me the what? Joy. Everybody say joy. Everybody say joy. You want joy? You want joy that lasts? Get in the Word. Get in the Word. Like, listen, this is just the beginning of what's going to end up happening. I'm not a prophet. I don't know everything. But I can tell you right now, if I'm looking at your kids or I'm looking at my boy, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw my hands up and I'm going to say, wait a minute, listen, there's danger ahead. This is not the end of it. Don't lay down and be passive and go to sleep. This is just the beginning. Listen, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. We need to settle things. We need to forgive one another. We need to get rid of bitterness within our hearts and all the hatred and the envy. Things that are between us as God's people. And we need to unite and be revived and serve the Lord Jesus. The time is now. It's now. But we're still peddling about everything. Everything. 
Meanwhile, people's dying. People's dying without Jesus. Maybe that changes your thought process right there. They're not just dying. There's some that still die without Jesus. Dying without Jesus. Thirdly, let me share this with you. I shared it with the church real quick this morning. They asked George Mueller before he died, how did he stay so happy? You know anything about George Mueller? He prayed for millions of dollars that he never had. I mean, God used him tremendously with a lot of things. That's what he said. He said, I stay so happy and full of joy because every year, four times a year, I read the word of God on my knees. Then you know what you and me say, how's that possible? How's that possible? How many of you got that little thing on your phone that says screen time? Anybody know what that is? Oh, I encourage you to put your screen time on so it shows you at the end of the week how much screen time you had on your phone. Yes, screen time. And we wonder, do I have enough time to even read my Bible, much less four times a year? Can I ask you something? Should we not make time to read our Bible? Should we not make time? Listen, we're, 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 still, we're, still, we're still dabbling in things that we should have grown up from five years ago. We're still getting band-aided at church. And listen, I'm not just talking about new Christians. I'm talking about old Christians. They're still learning how to forgive. They're still learning not how to be judgmental. They're still learning how to not be critical. I mean, it's so much stuff all the time. Wonder why in the world we can't, why, why, why in the world we can't make progress? Listen, the only way to make progress is to be able to draw closer to the Lord, to keep praying the way you should, and to keep reading the Bible the way you should. Thirdly. So now you see Jeremiah talk. Now let's see God talk. Jeremiah says, Lord, how do I stay close as the nation just continues to slip away? What do I do? Notice in verse number 19, pick up with me if you will. The Bible says this. Therefore, therefore, thus saith the Lord. It's the Lord speaking. If thou return, then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vile, Thou shalt be as my mouth, let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. Notice where he says, if thou stand before me and if thou take forth the precious from the vow. Not only stay close through prayer, stay close through the word, but stay close through holiness. Holiness. He said to take the precious from the vow. In other words, you need to separate yourself from sin and stay away from sin. That's what God's trying to tell us to do. You really want to stay close? You really want to be able to make it? Then you need to be able to live a life to present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I say it all the time, preaching. We're so worried about the debt of the White House, and we, we have debt in our own house. We're so worried about Donald Trump or Joe, Joe Biden straight. Well, let me ask you this. Are you sinless? We're so worried about somebody else's heart, we're, we're, but we're not ever concerned about our heart. Everybody all right this morning? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Let me ask you something. What if you, ran for camp, oh, what if you ran for president and all your sin was exposed? Let's park here for a while. Yeah. I'd be embarrassed. Matter of fact, forgive me. I know y'all say you shouldn't say that, but I don't want to run for president because I don't want nobody snooping around my life. Amen. I mean, I, I'm not too proud to say it. There's some things I said, I said last week. There's some things I don't want my 14-year-old boy to know. There, there, there's some things, unless the Lord tells there's some things he will never know about my life. Never know about my life whatsoever. You run for president, and then what we do, we sit back, we judge all the time. And then we get all worked up. We get all mad about everything because of this nature, the nation, and the, and the direction it's going. Can I ask you something? It's just like pastoring a church. If you could do such a good job, why don't you go run for president? Preach on, preacher. I mean, I, lo I love y'all, but listen, I mean, I'm telling you the straight truth. We, we put so much importance that it's literally divided this country. Matter of fact, it's divided churches. 
I've seen people be friends for years that stop being friends over this mess. But yet God is still on the throne. I'm thinking what really matters in our life? Is it Jesus or, or is it election? Is it Jesus or is it COVID-19? Is it Jesus or is it hell? I mean, look, what, what really matters? What really matters? And I don't know, may, maybe I should back up and punt and say, well, maybe we could just build a greater con- congregation if I, I don't just be so open about it. Maybe we just get up here and tickle everybody's ears and we just preach on homosexuality and adultery and all those things and we'll just shout out, shout the house and say amen. But we don't want to preach on our own sins. Everybody all right this morning? Friend, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I, I don't mind saying it now. I voted for Trump without apology. I don't mind saying it. I'm not saying it's the right thing. I voted for Trump without apology. I'm not promoting. It's over with. I never said it beforehand. Why? Because I'm not going to use my voice to make you go one way or the other. I stayed accountable to it. But now it's over. You want to know why I did? Because the things that I lined up for in the Bible, I did not vote for a man. I voted for the things that lined up in the Word of God that I believe that God says, this is what matters and this is the way it should be. That, that's why I did I don't agree with everything that he says. I don't agree with everything Joe Biden does. I'm not bringing politics into church. You'll never, you'll, you'll never see me do it. It's over with and done. So make sure if you talk about me, you let everybody know he didn't talk before, he talked after. Amen. Because my goal, my desire, and my burden is that you see Jesus. Jesus. That's what matters. Because in my heart, this is what I do. And and listen, Tiffany and Nolan asked this a thousand times. What do you really think is going to happen? I mean, did anybody else get those questions from your spouse or your children? What do you really think is going to happen? This is what I said. I don't know. You got to know something. Dad, what do you mean you don't know? I mean, I I, I, I don't know. You want to know why? Turn over John, I mean, turn over to chapter number 17. I'll show you why. I'll show you why. You say, well, what can I do? I, I, I want to stay holy. How can I do something? Listen to this. Verse number 5, Jeremiah chapter number 17. Thus saith the Lord, listen to this. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm whose heart departeth from the Lord. You want to know why I'm not going to push a man one way or another? Because the Bible plainly says, plainly says, you cannot debate this. You cannot argue with this. It plainly says, verse 5, thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm. In other words, you trust in man, you're going to live a cursed life. If we lose our testimony and our joy and our countenance is determined upon anything that happens with a man or whatever, the Bible says we're going to be, in other words, we're going to be miserable. Everybody, Everybody good this morning? Can I get an amen somewhere or something? I mean, I'm trying to tell you, it's still all right. We're good. It's fine. And it's like I said, I don't care who's voted in, God is still God. He showed up this morning. That wasn't the president. It's all right. We're going to be fine. The Bible says in verse number six, notice this. He says, for he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when God, when good cometh but shall inhabit the parched places of the wilderness and the salt land and not inhabited. Notice the misery that's there. But verse number seven, the Bible says this, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Why? Notice what he shall be like. Even in the middle of voting and elections and things going the wrong way, what, how, how should a Christian that trusts in the Lord, how should he be? Well, verse eight says, For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when her when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be turned shall be as be green, and shall not be careful the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. In other words, God says, when your trust is in the Lord, not only are you going to exist, but you're going to grow. You know what my burden is for this church? Is that you continue to grow that you love Jesus 
that no matter who preaches behind this pulpit and whoever pastors this church, that there is a consistency in this service all the time that Jesus Christ is high lifted up and not even, listen, a president or a preacher. Preachers will fail you. Presidents will fail you. Matter of fact, if you look back in the last week, you probably failed you somewhere. Amen. So here's why I don't know. Notice what verse number 9 says. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Whose heart? The heart. It didn't say their heart. The heart. Every man's heart is deceitful. That's what the Bible says. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. If I get somebody to come to the piano, I'll close here in a moment. I want to ask you this morning, and I, I'm done. Listen to me. Instead of being concerned about everybody else's heart and everybody else's intentions and what's right and what's wrong, could you stop for a minute and consider your own heart? Consider your own heart? To keep your heart right? Let, let's quit outsourcing everything and let's quit putting everything on everybody else and let's look right here for a moment how's your heart we, we want this country to change and we want our families to change and we want our church to be different how is your heart this morning because the bible says the hearts of people above all things are desperately wicked we're so we're so busy trying to figure everything else out but we neglect the opportunity to be able to let God search us out. Now look up here. She's going to begin to play for a minute. Play something sweet because that softens everybody up while we're in here. Ha <laughs> ha. Everybody all right? Look at me. There's sometimes we have to look at our families and say things didn't turn out the way we wanted to. Or maybe they did. But in the valleys and the mountaintops, we still have to say one thing. But God's going to take care of us. I said all this this morning simply to be able to tell you Jeremiah was in the same place that we are. I preached on Daniel on Wednesday night. 70 years of captivity. You know how he made it? He just stayed faithful. That's what the Bible said. I love you so much that I want Haynes Baptist Church. Now listen, what I'm telling you, I'm telling you for eternity's sake right now. It's got nothing to do with the temporary. It's got nothing to do with what's going on. No matter what happens in years to come, it's going to get harder. Some of you that's read your Bible all the way through, you know it's going to get harder. Look at me right now. If you don't purpose in your heart right now that no matter what happens, that you're going to keep your eyes on the Lord, what else is it going to take for God to be able to open your eyes and say, okay, God, I'm fixed in you. We can't be passive and just say, well, we'll get through it. No, somewhere down the line, you and your family, your children, y'all need to look at each other, your, 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 your spouses. And you need to be able to say, hey, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know that God is going to take care of his remnant. I, I, I know that God is going to look after us, and there might be some changes. You know, the going joke has been this. Well, if I don't like it, I'll just move out of the state. If I don't like it, I'll just move out of the country. Has it crossed my mind? Sure. I can't lie and preach at the same time. But you know what hit me on yesterday morning? I got up early. That's exactly what people do and how they treat churches. When they don't get it their way, they just pack up and go to the next church. Listen, God's dealing with me like he's dealing with you. It's been hard for me to keep my mouth shut on a lot of stuff that's happened in this country. I preach the Bible. I would be, a, I'd be, I would be worth a plug nickel if I didn't tell you the truth. Can I get an amen right there? All right? So I've had to be surrendered and submitted and do it in the right spirit, not promote a political party, and I'm not. I'm not. At the end of the day, I mean, one of y'all, if Gabe Wikes will run as an independent, I'm going to vote for Gabe Wikes. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Amen. He got my vote, I tell you. I mean, you understand what I'm trying to say? 
But the, the point of all of this is when it's all said and done, that we still have to remember that we were bought with a price. We belong to Him. We belong to Him. And what we do, it matters for the next generation coming behind us. The generation before us, they paid a great price. But somewhere down the line, our generation is going to have to stand in the gap too and say, you know what, Lord, choose me. Use me. Lord, I'll stand in the gap. So I just want to ask you this morning, by way of invitation, how will you respond to making up your mind? No matter what happens, I'm going to keep my eyes on the Lord. I'm not asking you to agree with it. I'm not asking you just to be okay with it. I'm not asking that. But I'm talking about as a child of God, as a family this morning, to make up your mind that we're going to commit that no matter what happens, that we're not going to let anything affect us in our testimony and our serving the Lord. Whether we like it or not, this is what God's going to do and God's going to take care of us. I believe if we, if God's children, will do that, then I believe the remnant it's a lot smaller than what you realize, but I still believe God will take care of us and help us through. If you believe that, say amen. There's a lot of good people that love Jesus. This is what I'm about to tell you. That there's some people they cannot witness to ever again because of the way they responded during this political campaign. They burnt bridges over a candidate. And now somebody could be dying going to hell and they'll never be able to witness to them. What matters most to you? I hate to be honest, but I'm just being frank with you. Father, I love you. Use your word. I pray. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to know that you've tuned in, and I pray that today that the word of God that was shared will be a blessing to you. If somehow, some way that the Lord has spoke to your heart, and maybe you're uh, sitting where you are and you don't know for sure that you're saved by the grace of God, and you've ever trusted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, and I want you to know that the Word of God says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible makes it very plain. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You say, how do I get saved? You have to trust in Christ and Christ alone. Repent of your sin and then know as the Bible says where Jesus says, I am the way. And I pray that today that that would be your desire to be able to seek out for the Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to trust Him as a Lord and Savior. If you do that today, and you repent of your sins, and you take him as your Savior, would you do us a favor and contact our church office at 336-788-0551? We would love to be able to speak with you. We would love to be able to encourage you, maybe be able to help you find a local church no matter where you are today, and maybe even possibly disciple you. So we want to say thank you so much, and we are definitely going to be praying for you and this ministry that our church has. If you know you're saved and maybe the Lord spoke to you in a different way and there's something heavy on your heart, again, that same number, if you can contact us, we'll be so thankful to be able to reach out and be able to speak with you. But again, on behalf of the church and myself, thank you so much and may God bless you.